Hey, I'm Rob Gant with the Goose Creek Gazette and the Berkeley Independent. I'm here at the Somerville Journal Scene offices with my teammate Roger Lee of the Somerville Journal Scene, and we are talking some football this week. Uh, special thanks to our sponsors, Hoover the Mover Monk's Corner, Tosha LLC Precious Metal Recycler, and Grace Funeral Services. Roger, week two is in the books. We're heading into week three. Um, as we said last week, the picture was kind of starting to become clearer on who's the real deal. Well, you know, Ashley Ridge is coming off a win over Stratford, 21-6. Uh, they were able to move the ball offensively at times, and and that's you know exactly what they needed following that that tough Berkeley loss uh, this week. Ashley Ridge is uh, going to Cane Bay. That's always an exciting matchup because Absolutely. those schools started the same year. That's right. And uh, you know there's a little bit of rivalry there. They've been in different divisions, but uh, uh, you know I think a lot of those kids know each other because of proximity to to each other, and uh, it's going to be a real good game at Cane Bay, I think. I mean, it kind of always is. I mean, they've played every year since the schools opened in 2008. They played twice a year the first two years. They split those four matchups, and right now I think it's uh, – I think Ashley Ridge has the series lead 7-5, to five, and the common thread in those matchups is pretty much they're, they're close. And they're always a competitive battle, comes down to the fourth quarter. Um, so that's probably what's going to happen on Friday. We also uh, – Somerville came over uh, – is coming off a big win over uh, Goose Creek, 34 nothing. Uh, you were at that game, right, Rob? I, I was, and uh, I can tell you, I was really impressed. Uh, I guess talk about Goose Creek. Um, the, I know the score was 34 0 in Somerville, and Somerville looked great in uh, in spots for sure. But I was uh, impressed with the effort that Goose Creek gave, and it's, you know, they all these kids kept playing. And then on offense, I really like what uh, Jason Winstead's trying to do with them. Uh, they have. They had some things to build on in that game. I know the score was 34 nothing, but I was impressed with Goose Creek. Um, really just kind of looking at what he's trying to build there. You can kind of see it all starting to come together. It may take him a little bit more time than just this season, but he looks. But I was impressed with what I saw. Um, Somerville, yeah, man, they, they've, got, they, I mean, they've got some horses up front. They've got a great quarterback and a uh, um, couple, couple, couple good receivers. Um, I was pretty impressed with them too, actually. Yeah, I was, I was glad to see them get Brody Hopkins involved this week. He, you know, he's somebody they've been talking about for a while, but yeah. last year he didn't get to play that many snaps uh, just because it had some of the guys that had Shaq Davis and, and those guys ahead of him. Uh, so it was good to see Brody get some, some touches, and uh, you know, I think their offense is starting to really start to see what they can do. So when they, um, when they um, play Stratford this week, it's going to be interesting because Stratford – you know, I think it's a team that's starting to do this kind of the same way. They're, they have the record isn't impressive, uh, but they've uh, they look pretty good at Ashley Ridge. They, uh, you know, they move the ball at times. They got some guys on defense who can play. Uh, you know, I think Stratford by the end of the season it might look like a little bit of a different team than what they did in the first two weeks of the season for sure. No, I agree. I mean, I think they're actually uh, Stratford's actually two and one. Um, oh, sorry. That's right. They beat Timberland. They beat Timberland right out of the gate, and then they uh, beat Stall. I'm actually, I was really, you know, the score 21 to six. I actually Ridge won the game. To me, that tells me that Stratford's uh, ready to compete in 5A because I've seen Ashley Ridge. They're a good football team. Um, it's, you know, last year Stratford's defense really struggled slowing down people, and uh, the fact that they were able to hold Ashley Ridge to 21. Uh, speaks volumes about the steps that they've made forward. Again, I don't necessarily know that they're going to be, um, you know, at the top shelf right away, but it does mean that Denny McDaniel is doing a pretty good job because there were some games last year when, I mean, Stratford just couldn't slow anybody down. And the fact that they slowed Ashley Ridge down, uh, if I'm a Stratford fan, it gives me hope that they can kind of hang in there with Somerville a little bit. Somerville trips up, fumbles the ball a lot. You know, m maybe Stratford is, is in that game and um, has a chance to win. Right. I can't underestimate the home crowd. Absolutely uh, not. Talking about the well, their, stu their student section will be dialed in for sure. They'll have some sort of theme going on. Might be Hawaiian thing. Like today, it's T-shirt day for me. You know, Tampa Bay Rays. Hey, so I figured I'd wear it. It's getting into the baseball season. I figured I'd show some, uh, throw, uh, sh show the Tampa Bay Rays some support. And also, it was T-shirt day. You evidently you didn't get the memo. I did not get that memo. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Well, go ahead. What, what else? <laughs> All right. So also, uh, Fort Dorchester had a, a big win over Vieira out of Florida. Uh, that is exactly what Fort Dorchester needed. They needed a close game because so many of those guys uh, from you know, watched uh, as second stringers, third stringers, watched the carry on, just run the show and all the success that team has had the, the past couple of years. And you know, those guys have a lot of playing experience, the, the ones who are the starters this year. But I don't think they've ever been in that situation themselves 
where you know it's on them. They had to come from behind to win against a really good football team. So that's going to help them moving forward this week, the fort. Uh, they ended up coming right back from behind to win 31-28. Uh, so in the closing seconds, you know, they had to, they had to put, punch it in. Uh, I, I followed the game on Twitter, and it was amazing to follow it because people around here were thinking, oh, man, Fort Dorchester's about to, about to trip up. And then, uh, of course, at the very end, Fort Dorchester wins. It's kind of like, like all those little Marvel comic movies where the good guy always wins. Well, you know, on Friday <laughs> night, the good guys won and sent the boys back to Florida with a loss. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, this week, uh, Fort has Wando coming into, into Bagwell Stadium. Uh, Wando is one of those teams, you know, uh, it doesn't matter what the record is, you know, eventually they're going to have a game where they put it all together and just give a team fits. Uh, you know, I think coming off that, that win over a, a Florida program, the Fort's got a lot of momentum. So I, I think, you know, they, they got the edge in that game. Uh, you know, do you, what do you know about Wando? I mean, I know they, uh, they usually have uh, some guys who can catch the ball and a good quarterback. What, you know, what are it's they my, this year? It, I mean, it's my understanding that their bread and butter is probably on the defensive side of the ball. I think they're young at quarterback. I, I believe they lost their quarterback for the season or for a lot of the season with an injury. And so they're kind of behind the eight ball a little bit. And, uh, you know, for Wando to be in that football game, Fort Dorchester would, would really, really, really have to help them. Uh, cough it up five or six times. Um, you know, and even though Wanda's bread and butter probably is her defense this year, if you had to pick something, uh, I don't think they have the horses to slow Fort Dorchester down. But, I mean, Fort Dorchester would have to beat Fort Dorchester for them to be in the game. The only other thing we're really watching here uh, in Dorchester County is uh, Pine Woods trying to get things going. Uh, you know, they're struggling uh, early in the season, uh, and it's not going to get any easy for them. They go to uh, Hammond, which has a strong program, lots of state championships in the last – yeah, I think 10 years they've been just really, really one of the powers in Skeezer, So, I think you're playing the Alabama of Skeeza, and you're <laughs> going to need a miracle to pull that one out. But that is why they play the game. All right, well, over in Berkeley County, uh, we have uh, about six games. Two teams are off. Berkeley and Timberland get to chill this week. They'll probably be at a game somewhere. Um, let's see, Goose Creek, as we mentioned earlier, uh, well, you mentioned, we mentioned them earlier, we were talking about Somerville. Uh, Goose Creek travels over to West Ashley. I think that's a chance for the Gators to win. Uh, West Ashley is coming off a big loss to Berkeley. I think Goose Creek matches up a little better with them than they do a big, strong, physical team like Ashley Ridge and Somerville. If Goose Creek can uh, not turn the ball over a lot, you know, and play, you know, not have any missed assignments on defense, I think Goose Creek will have a chance to win that game. The Gators won that meeting last year. Uh, Stratford hosts Somerville. Um, as we talked about earlier, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens here. Um, I think Stratford took some strides forward last week, even though they lost. Um, I'm excited to see how they match up with Somerville because, you know, me, me being a Berkeley County guy, you know, Goose Creek's already played Somerville. Stratford's about to play him. It'll give me a general idea of kind of how to, how to compare Goose Creek and Stratford. Uh, Cane Bay hosts AR. Again, it's a rival matchup. Last year, it came down to the fourth quarter. Um, I expect the same type of thing again. Uh, Cane Bay had l last week off, which is probably good for them. They had some guys banged up after the Fort Dorchester game, which is, you know, that can happen because Fort Dorchester is uh, rough and tough and they play hard. Uh, I, I think they're going to get some guys back. Um, and Cane Bay had a chance to kind of work on some things offensively. The key here, really for Cane Bay, is they're going to have to sustain some drives, keep, keep the chains moving, keep the clock rolling, because you, you really don't want Nick Cunningham and Matt Duncan to have the ball. Um, much, you know, for Ashley Ridge because, you, you know, that's a pretty good uh, duo. And, I mean, and they've got some good receivers, too. Uh, Hanahan hosts Bluffton. That's a rematch of a playoff matchup from last year. Hanahan um, actually went to Bluffton last year in the playoffs first round, had him on the ropes, and um, ended up losing Friday night. Um, Bluffton comes to Hanahan. It'll be the second home game for the Hawks. The Hawks are coming off a 37-12 to win over Woodland. Um, that was a good win for the Hawks. They were um, they were down like 12-3 to in that in that game, came back and kind of got rolling. We ended up winning 37-12. Cross hosts King Street. Cross, same story. Just a very young, inexperienced team. They're going to be up against some adversity pretty much all year. Um, this will be a chance to see if they've improved. They're, they're coming off a 47 uh, nothing loss to Timberland, which Timberland can do that to people for sure. Uh, one more game in our area, St. John's Christian hosts Lawrence Academy. Um, the Cavaliers went on the road and hammered Richard Wynn, uh, I think, 44 to nothing on Friday. So that tells me they're pretty good. Lawrence Academy played one of our teams earlier this year, Faith Ridge, and that was like nip and tuck. So I'm interested to see how St. John's Christian fares in that one. Um, 
that's the slate for Berkeley County. Well, that does it for me this week. Uh, this is my special guest, Roger Lee of the Somerville Journal scene. Also our sponsors, Hoover the Mover Amongst Corner, Tosha LLC Precious Metal Recycler, and Grace Funeral Services. Guys, see you at the football field this weekend.